We are at the YWCA in Brooklyn. Um, this is going to be our the Brooklyn Youth Fellows' first conference. So this is a youth resistance conference where we're going to break out into workshops and talk about five different justice pillars. And yeah, it's going to be a really like an action-packed day. Um, stand up if you or any of your family members, friends, or somebody personally you know has been formerly incarcerated. If you could have witnessed any historical event, what would it be? I'd like to go back to when the National Women's Party picketed the White House and held up signs of Woodrow Wilson's word and used it against him. I want to go back to the song where like, black, it had like a black bathroom and a white bathroom. Only so I could keep use the white bathroom. On a time when Dr. Martin Luther King was marching and actually to witness the first African-American young girl actually step school in the whole white school. Internalized is the process by which a member of an oppressed group comes to accept and live out the inaccurate myths and stereotypes applied to the group, which is common among black people. Like if you have a cut on your body and you don't know where it's coming from, how are you going to be able to heal it? In order for you to be like part of a, a society or whatever, you have to change yourself. But before you do that, you have to find out who you are before you want to change yourself. Um, kind of, you always have that question like how do you identify yourself or what is your race? I mean this could be different. Um, for example, you identify yourself as Guyanese. Sometimes that option is not there. <laughs> I'm, I'm dark skinned, I'm black, black African American. That's all I can check off. I can't check off nothing else in that box. That's the only box I got to check. It does kind of bust your brain where it ends up being not so much about you being an immigrant, now it's more about racial status, more than you know just uh, both together. There's a whole two, two different situations you gotta deal with. So it does make sense the way you said that and it kind of opened my mind up real quick. So I think that was a great segue to like our next question, which is how do we cut down the roots of these injustices? How do we, what can we do? What is our role? So resisting basically means having the strength and the courage to be yourself because in a lot of situations things are bad because of conformity, like you conform to what you think is okay and these things are not okay, like they only seem okay just because a lot of people have conformed to them. I feel I've been taught that since I'm a young person I really don't have any power because I'm not working or I can't influence, but um, seeing the protests from the travel ban and um, all the people who went to like JFK airport protested, all the lawyers who came to serve those people. It showed me that all the little things do count. So I've been thinking about like right now what I can do and some things is just speaking up because I feel there's a lot of people who don't have a voice and it's my job to speak up and yeah, realize that I have a privilege at being at the table. Um, and make a commitment to our community. It's so important for the fact that my community needs a lot of help and that I will be there to have my team when it needs it. Together we can learn to let our wings work again. Together we can learn that death becomes rebirth because our stories aren't over and they will continue. All right, cool.